Nowadays we have uh, 20 hotels under operation, already open and operating. And uh, we have a pipeline, a pipeline, a pipeline another uh, 25 hotels, uh, which will be open uh, from now until 2020. Uh, we are we are uh, opening hotels in uh, new destinations like uh, Chiang Mai. We are opening hotels in uh, uh, new hotels in Malaysia, like in, uh, in uh, the Bukit Tinggi. We recently uh, took over a new hotel in uh, Hanoi, which is 45 minutes uh, uh, driving, called uh, Meria Babi Mountain. This is a beautiful uh, retreat hotel by the mountain in a natural oh. reserver. We signed yesterday the 10th hotel in China, which is called Melia Huaye Lake Resort, uh, one hour drive from Jinan. So, yeah, we, we, we keep on growing uh, since uh, uh, four years ago, where we had only seven hotels. We moved to 45 hotels and, and more under negotiation in a very appealing destinations like uh, Phuket. New hotels in Bali. Uh, it's a very good place. And those are Bali, uh, Hanoi, uh, places where Melia has been present for a long time, for decades. Yeah. So it's. So that's. Uh, I imagine the opening of the Shanghai office was that about four years ago. Uh, the Shanghai office was uh, open a little bit longer, uh, like uh, the final run. Uh, Seven, eight years ago. Seven years yeah, ago. Yeah, because we used to have uh, also offices uh, in uh, Jakarta and uh, Singapore. We had an office in Singapore. And was the, first the the sales effort for outbound from Asia to the rest of the world, where where you have properties, that's picked up a whole lot as well during this period, no? Yeah, it's a big big thing now. We. Uh, in Melia Hotels International, we have a clear strategy which is divided into inbound and outbound. And now, uh, the outbound business uh, from, from, from Asia Pacific to other hotels uh, in the, the other regions of Melia Hotels International represent uh, more than 60% of, of the production generated in the whole of Asia Pacific. So it means that uh, keeping the markets like uh, Australia, India, uh, South Korea, Japan, uh, China, of course, are contributing a lot to the other hotels out of uh, Asia Pacific. Not only to the hotels we have in Asia Pacific, but the hotels we have uh, overseas. Around the world. Well, the, the alliance, the recent alliance, I think, that you made with the largest online travel company in China and getting closer to the world, Sea Trip. Uh, with more than uh, 250 million customers. Now, that's fairly recent, but what do you expect from it? Well, uh, obviously it's not, a, it's not a secret that uh, Sea Trip now is, uh, has become one of the top partners in, uh, in, in, the, in the global, in the global uh, environment. No? It's, uh, it's at the same level than Booking, Expedia, some of, other of the big guys. Uh, for Sea Trip, for the ones we have a very, very close relationship because we are both based in Shanghai, so we meet each other very frequently. Uh, they have a main goal, which is to grow in the outbound business. That means Sea Trip is already very strong. Only 60% of the online uh, market share uh, comes through them to Sea Trip, but. For, for China, within China. The main goal now is to grow out of China, and especially in Europe and the rest of the Asia Pacific. So now, Melia Hotels International has become a key player for them because of the number of hotels we have in those uh, destinations. And it's uh, found a very interesting about your new um, program in Europe, Spain especially, uh, where apparently the Chinese like uh, to spend the Chinese New Year's, the, the program called Pengyu by Melia. Pengyu in Chinese is friend. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, 
Well, Pengio is a program we, uh, we designed uh, in China uh, for Chinese travelers, and we put it in the, in the market, not in, in, in the whole portfolio of Media Hotels International, which is 370 hotels. We just uh, identify some key potential hotels where we uh, set up this, this, this program. It's basically, uh, it's basically um, it gives, gives to the Chinese travelers uh, the special, some special requirements they like to have when they are abroad. They, they, we're trying to make them feel at home you know, when they are in Europe or they are basically out of China. And those special requirements are very simple but very important for them like having a, a Chinese uh, uh, food corner in the buffet breakfast where they can find the congee, they, they can find their dim sum dumplings and some other uh, specific items. They have instant noodles in the minibar, they do have their own uh, uh, Chinese uh, TV channels, they have uh, Chinese speaking uh, staff in the hotels. So there are certain items which are very important for them. But anyway, uh, in we, we believe Penjo is very important, especially for uh, baby boomers and some uh, Gen X uh, generations. But it's not that important. We understand nowadays it's not that important for the millennials because they want to uh, explore uh, the local, the local taste. They wanna, they, they wanna want to the us. Yeah. <laughs> correct. That's correct. So we must now adapt the strategy. Then we need Penjo for those travelers, but also we must understand what are the requirements for the new generation from China that are more adventurous uh, and they look for genuine things in the destinations. Thank you, Casas. My pleasure.